This video is part three on a series called Surprising Symptoms of Dementia. I'm going to share five symptoms of dementia that are common, but not talked about a lot. And the fifth one is super common and causes a lot of frustration for caregivers. How many of these symptoms have you noticed in your own loved one with dementia or in another person with dementia? Symptom one, hiding things. This happens a lot. There are two ways hiding things tends to play out. The first way is that they hide things in an effort to keep them safe. So they might hide their wallet or their purse to make sure nobody else gets to it, but then they forgot that they hid it. They forgot where they hid it. And so it feeds into this belief that people are after their things. And so this way of hiding things tends to come out of a sense of fear or worry. Another way that hiding things can play out in dementia is out of embarrassment. So this might be a person who has soiled their clothing and had an accident. And so they realize, they recognize that that's not right and it shouldn't have happened. And so they try to hide it. And this might be where you find soiled underwear under a pillow or behind a plant or somewhere else in the house that you would least expect to find. Symptom two is foul language. This is where the person with dementia starts to lose their filter their, in their executive functioning, the frontal lobes of their brain. And so they start using foul language that maybe they would have never used before in their past. Or if they did use foul language a lot in their past, now it's coming up in situations, conversations, and places with people that would not be typical for them to use. For instance, in the church setting, talking to the person sitting next to them in a pew, they're no longer able to differentiate when is an appropriate time to use that type of language versus when it's not. Along the same lines of foul language and losing their filter is symptom number three, which is hypersexual behaviors. Now, like most things in dementia, this can happen in several different ways. One way, which is common for a lot of spouses to talk about. I have several care blazers inside of my care course who talk about their spouses fondling themselves and playing with themselves in the home at all times of day, pretty much anytime they're left alone. And this can be quite bothersome for the spouse to witness and to see. And that's one way this hypersexual behavior can happen. But another way it can happen is that the person with dementia is no longer able to recognize or realize who is an appropriate person to be sexual with. And so a common occurrence might be if there's an adult daughter caring for a father, and the father might not realize that's his daughter providing the hands-on care and might interpret it as a sexual advance. And so that's a really difficult situation. And it truly is that this person, the person with dementia doesn't recognize that person as their child or daughter. They just recognize it as a female who looks younger and is attractive. Symptom number four is a misidentification of reflections. You may have seen stories like this before on TV or in social media where the person with dementia sees their reflection in the mirror and either they get very concerned, anxious, fearful, in distress because they see a stranger or somebody they don't recognize in their own home, or they might see it as an interesting person, somebody to have a conversation with, and they start talking to the reflection in the mirror, not realizing that it's them. And symptom number five, something that happens a lot for many caregivers, and I'll explain medically what it is, is this idea of not being able to use common everyday objects. So this was something really obvious to me with my mom. She was not able at some point to know how to open a car door. It was like the inside of my car door was a mystery to her. She'd press all the buttons, she'd feel the handle, put her hand over the handle. She just didn't know how to open the handle to open the door. And we see this a lot with people who have dementia who maybe don't know anymore how to use the remote control, how to use the telephone, maybe not even know how to brush their teeth. And the reason this can be a source of extreme frustration for caregivers is because the caregiver can say to themselves, I know they have the ability to do this. I've seen them be able to pick up a cup and take it to their mouth, so why wouldn't they be able to brush their teeth? This is something known as apraxia. Apraxia is the inability to perform an action or a task despite the physical ability to do so and the desire to do so. It's the, just that the brain is not connecting with the body about the steps to take. 
This often leads to situations where the caregiver can see the person with dementia doing something okay with maybe another family member, another visitor, at another time when maybe they're by themselves and the caregiver's observing them and they don't, the person with dementia maybe doesn't realize the caregiver's observing them. And so the caregiver starts to think they're doing this on purpose. They're acting like they need more help and they don't really need that much help. But this is something called apraxia and that can happen in dementia. I'm wondering if you've noticed anything like this in your loved one. All right, how many of the five that I just talked about have you noticed? And if you missed the previous two videos in this series on surprising symptoms of dementia, I've linked them below in the description so you can go and watch those. Just click on the link. I've also put a link in the description for you to sign up for our free dementia dose newsletter where I send you every single week my top dementia tips, approaches, strategies, tools, and resources straight to your inbox. You'll want to make sure that you sign up today. And just in case you haven't done it already, first of all, if you have, I want to say thank you so much. I love you so much. I really appreciate it. The red subscribe button on your screen, when you press it, it's important for two reasons. Number one, it communicates to YouTube that these videos are helpful for people like you. So then YouTube is smart enough to go out there and find people who are searching for information like this, and then they'll put my videos in front of them. But number two, something I'm really hoping to do more this year is to invite some high caliber guests, experts in the dementia field, researchers and authors, scientists to come in and share their expertise with all of you. And in order for me to attract that high level caliber type of person, it's important for me to show that this is a channel that people find valuable. So that's why pressing that button is really helpful. I so appreciate it. Sending you all so much love. I'll be back next week. Bye. Also, Nico gets a belly rub for every person who subscribes from this video. So if you haven't already, click the red subscribe button. It's totally free. And Nico says, thank you very much.